Manuscript 133 is a surviving example of a Fechtbuch, or fight book. The manuscript is undoubtedly one of the jewels of the Royal Armouries collection, but it has had a rather chequered history. It has had a number of different homes and has been the spoil of war at least once. It has been damaged on numerous occasions, including being burned, scribbled on, graffitied, disbound, and in its current condition, there are almost certainly pages missing. Although it might not be in top condition now, it's what the manuscript is and what it depicts that make it unique and give it its value. It depicts a system of fencing with the sword and buckler, consisting of seven guard positions, or wards, and over 36 different sequences or plays. Some of these sequences are longer and more complicated than others, and some of them are now incomplete. The characters are described in the text as being a priest and a scholar. The priest takes the lead role in most of the sequences. In the last two pages of the manuscript, the scholar is replaced by a woman named Valpurgis. This leaves us with some rather nice images of two classes of medieval society interacting in a way that we would not normally expect, namely a priest and a woman having a fight. Over the years, a number of different dates have been suggested for the creation of the manuscript from the uh, late 13th century through to the late 15th. Uh, the current thinking is, using the artistic style and also the clothing worn by the female character as guidelines, a date of round about 1320 to 1330 is about right. A close scrutiny of the text reveals that it was the work of at least two scribes and a number of artists were involved in doing the illustrations. The first recorded home of the manuscript is a monastery in Franconia in Bavaria, Germany in the mid-16th century. However, as it is not recorded there until the mid-16th century, it is probable that the manuscript was not produced there and may not even have been produced in that part of Germany. The manuscript was taken from the monastery by a soldier called Johannes Herbert von Würzburg, who served as the fencing master to Friedrich Wilhelm the Duke of Saxe Weimar during a military campaign in the mid-1550s. Johannes presumably recognised the manuscript as being something of interest and he even went as far as leaving his name uh, as graffiti on one of the pages before handing it over to his master. From Friedrich Wilhelm the manuscript went into the hands of the Dukes of Saxe Gotha and is recorded in the catalogues of the Gotha Ducal Library in the 18th and 19th centuries. Throughout the period from the 16th to the 19th century, the manuscript was referenced in numerous German works on fencing, including tantalising glimpses of what might be some of the now missing pages. The manuscript also was featured in an exhibition for the 1936 Berlin Olympics, but it then vanishes from the historical record until 1950, when it reappeared at Sotheby's in London. The Royal Armouries bought it at that auction and it went into the collection at the Tower of London, where it remained for the next 40 or so years. The manuscript then came to the attention of Dr. Geoffrey Forgang, then of the Higgins Museum, um, who was one of the first post-war scholars to realise the significance of what it was he was looking at. Um, it was his work that has brought the manuscript to the attention of modern audiences. This rediscovery of the manuscript has coincided with a resurgence in interest in European historical martial arts and has ensured that the manuscript remains at the forefront of debate and research. Numerous books have been written about or referring to the manuscript in various different languages including several full facsimile editions with translations and transcriptions. As the interest in historical martial arts continues to grow, so too does the interest in the source material, the European Fechtbuch tradition and 133 in particular. Broadly speaking, the surviving German Fechtbuch follow a continuous tradition, starting with the teachings of the 14th century fencing master Johannes Lichtenauer. His martial art continued to evolve into the 16th century as a succession of masters added their own glosses and flourishes to the system. 133, however, stands outside of this tradition. It's both older by several decades, but also teaches a style of fencing which is considerably different from that of the main tradition. No other fencing book teaches sword and buckler quite so thoroughly or sequentially as 133 does. The system which it teaches comes across as being both fast and dynamic. Although the manuscript 
certainly couldn't teach you how to uh, fight with a sword and buckler from scratch, it does go a long way towards giving a very accurate depiction of the style of combat that it's uh, trying to talk about. One thing to bear in mind when talking about Fechtbucher is that what survives for us today is not necessarily all that was written then. It's probable that numerous others were written that have now been lost to us or survive only partially as uh, snippets in other works. This raises the possibility that in its own time 133 was not as unique as we think of it now and may only have been one of a number of other fencing manuscripts to treat fencing with the sword and buckler. This theory is given credence by the fact that surviving 16th century manuscripts, which include sections on sword and buckler fighting, depict it in a very similar way to that shown in 133. The library and archives at the Royal Armouries are now the current custodians of 133. And one of the questions that we get most frequently asked about it is, what is it actually called? Well, if the manuscript had a title page when it was first written, that sadly is now lost to us. So we have no way of knowing what it was called in its own time. It's had a number of different names since then. For example, it's sometimes referred to as the Walpurgisfechtbuch, after the female character, or it's sometimes called the Towerfechtbuch, because of course it resided at the Tower of London when we first bought it. More often than not though, it's just referred to as 133. And the reason, and this is important, it's a Roman numeral 1, not a capital letter I. This is because when it was first catalogued into the collection, class 1 was art and archive material. And so the catalogue name for the manuscript became Royal Armouries Manuscript Class 1, Number 33 shorten simply to 133 for convenience. Nowadays, archive material has got its own designation, RAR, meaning Royal Armouries Record. So, technically speaking, the correct catalogue name for the manuscript now is Royal Armouries Record 0033. However, 133 has kind of stuck over the years and is still the name that its legion of adoring fans refer to it today so 133 it is, and I can't see that changing anytime soon. Although many years of research by numerous scholars have answered a lot of the questions about 133, it has not answered them all. We still don't know when the manuscript was written, where it was written, by whom, for whom, or even why it was written. We don't know who Valpurgis was, or why she is having a sword fight with a priest. We may have a good understanding of the combat system contained within the manuscript, but 133 remains even today a partial mystery, and that, I think, is why it continues to have such an enduring interest. If you'd like to know more about the combat system depicted within the manuscript, the Royal Armouries will soon be producing a series of short videos interpreting the various different sequences and plays contained within the manuscript. We'll have to bear in mind, of course, that there are more interpretations of the manuscript than there are pages within the manuscript, and all we can present is one idea of how we think it works.